Welcome to a Parallel Project Training APM Project Fundamentals Qualification Podcast based on the APM Body of Knowledge 7th edition. You should be using this in conjunction with our e-learning, podcasts and potentially a tutor-led course. For more information, please visit www.parallelprojecttraining.com Hello, welcome to another Parallel Project Training podcast with Paul Neighbour and Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Hello. How are you today? So we're doing the APM Fundamentals Qualification against the 7th edition, and we've got this exciting episode of Risk. Mm. Life's no fun without a bit of risk, is it? Yep. <laughs> so Depends uh, on your appetite for it, so, Paul. Yeah, so our criteria for this uh, section are define risk Define a risk, define risk management, explain the purpose of risk management, outline a high level risk management process. We might get a bit carried away when we get to that one. Yeah. <laughs> and describe the use of a risk register. So I suspect we better start off with what's a risk, define a risk. Mm. So the, the risk is the potential for a situation or an event to impact on the achievement of objectives. The project's objectives. And um, it's purposely kind of not written negatively there. Yeah. So we tend to think of risks as being bad things. Do we? I, th- I think a lot of people do. Yes, if you risk, if your money's at risk. That's yeah. what they say in the adverts, your money is at risk. Yeah. <laughs> um, but actually what, what we need to recognise here is that a risk can be a threat or it can be an opportunity. Yes, according to the APM's definition of risk, mm. it's both sides, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Potential of a situation or an event. Mm. Mm, to impact the achievement of the overall objectives or project objectives. Mm, Situation or an event. Hmm. So we need to be able to manage those those risks, those things that may occur on our projects, and that's where risk management comes in. Yeah. So the purpose of risk management is is what what are we trying to achieve with this risk management? Mm. Well, I think we need to... um, be able to recognise, identify and manage um, those potential threats or opportunities. Mm-hmm. And if we we don't use a risk management process, a structure to mm-hmm. support us through that, we, we might miss risks or yes. things might happen. Yes, that, but so what? Yeah. But what would matter? Um, so if you did miss the risks, would that matter? It costs a lot of money. It costs more wrong. money. Yeah, why? <laughs> a project what, could uh, ultimately fail. Yes, okay. So risks are uh, likely to cause you to fail to deliver the success criteria for the mm. project. Yeah. Any other benefits? I think we've got a bit more control over the project okay. as well. Yeah. So a bit more clarity. I think that gives a lot of assurance to, to your stakeholders. It gives them confidence. Yeah. Yeah, so the purpose is to give confidence, understand the risks, mm. um, m- increase the chance of delivering the project on time, I suspect. Mm. Um, good. So let's look at the process. I think that's the next uh, assessment criteria, the stages in the process. So it lists these out here, identify the risks, analyse the risks, respond to the risks and close the risks. Mm. So let's talk about that uh, identification. So I'm sitting there, a new project, mm. just arrived. How do I create a list of all my potential risks? Mm. What sort of things can I do? So you could just sit in a room yourself. On your own. <laughs> With a, with a piece of paper. <laughs> you could do. You might not come up with all of the risks well, I on your project. Well, I my perception of the risks, wouldn't I? Absolutely, so, as well. Yeah. So, so you need to involve other people in this process. Uh-huh. So you need to involve the team. You need yes. to speak to the sponsor. Yeah. You might do some brainstorming sessions. Yes. So um, you often hear risk workshops. Oh, I hate those. <laughs> They can be a big challenge. Everyone's throwing out ideas. You know what I like about, ideas. dislike about them? You end up doing the same old risks again and again and again. Mm. And you just trot out this and and people get bored of them because they're just too repetitive, really. And I think the risk, funnily enough, of risk identification is that we identify the risks of things that went wrong on our last project. Yes, yes. They're always the first thing that comes to mind. Because they're more available to us. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to um, fail on our new project. So uh-huh. that might be completely unrelated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so we do need to make sure we try and apply a bit more structure around that. There's some other bits in your books about um, you doing interviews with experts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go and talk to the people who've done it before. Yeah. Um, and we can Technical use Technical experts as well. That's a good one. It's a good one, actually, if you're a junior PM, mm. uh, you might be doing the PFQ for the first time, and, and you're a bit sort of nervous about going to see this systems architect, or mm. you can say, well, I'm just coming to talk to you about the risks, you know, what might yeah. go wrong, because you're, you're sort of using them as an expert, and it's yeah. a way to build up a relationship as well, I suspect, as a byproduct. Absolutely. 
Good. Um, got other ways, assumptions analysis. That's my favourite word. What have we assumed? Mm. <laughs> what assumptions have we made here? And then checklists. I, I quite Checklists are quite good. If you've yeah. got lots of repetitive work in your project, uh, you can just run through a checklist. Have we done that? Have we done this? I think what a list... Slightly risk. Yeah, what a list does that um, you don't get in a risk workshop is everyone can kind of um, go on a bit of a tangent yes. in a risk workshop. So the, the prompt list gives you a bit more structure. Yeah. The flip side of that is it might give you too much structure and yes. you don't think about other yeah. kind of areas. Yeah, yeah. So I think a combination is the, is the best. Absolutely. So then we've got this huge list of risks, maybe 20, 30 risks for a small project. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the next step is to prioritise them or analyse them. Mm. And, and we can use this probability impact grid, which I think most people are familiar with now. Yeah. Where you look at how likely the risk is and, and what's the impact going to be on the project. And that can prioritise your, your um, high priority risks or lower priority risks. You sometimes see them as, um, <coughs> instead of probability, the likelihood yes, and the severity instead of impact. Um, yeah. But people tend to score these either using numbers or they say high, medium, low. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what we want to do is we want to score the, the probability of that risk happening mm -hmm. against the impact of it happening if it does occur. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to then group and um, categorise our risks to look at the most highest um, highest probability, highest impact risks first. Yes. Um, so it allows us to focus our attention a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So then we need to come up with a response. So we take our biggest, most significant risks and we come up mm. to what can we do about those risks. If, if we need to, I mean, it may be that that, that risk is is just inherent in the project and mm. so we're we going to take that you just it. have to you know you, no, you, if you risk nothing you gain nothing mm. <laughs> so risk isn't necessarily a bad thing should we talk through these responses paul so the responses to risk threats and opportunities or is that a bit um uh, we could do briefly so mm. threats you can just accept the risk you just say well yeah you know my car might be stolen what the heck you know i've got yep. insurance <laughs> avoid the risk that's usually de-scoping Mm -hmm. the project in some way shape or form so you might have some new technology that you're using you say well actually i'm not too sure it's going to work so we'll go back to the old way of doing it transfer contract the risk out yeah insurance or through betting a contractor to do that bit of the project or basically putting in some risk reduction measure uh, mitigation people usually call it mm -hmm. so doing some surveys or some prototyping to first try and reduce the probability or the impact of the risk Mm. And then for opportunities, you don't, it's still beside the coin, you want to maximise them, enhance them, exploit them, or you don't want to transfer them, but share them. Yep, absolutely. Good, good. So, that's so then the process doesn't finish there, because the process is about monitoring the uh, application of the risk, and, and does the response go down, does the response work, do the risks mm. stay the same, so it's an iterative process, it's not like a a one-shot thing mm. so it's an ongoing process and a risk register is basically an excel spreadsheet where you record the risks usually give them a number a category a description you evaluate the impact um, look at the owners of the risk who who might be responsible for managing that risk mm. and you put all the scores into that risk register as well so is it high medium low impact probability and quite often you see a revised score yes. as well yes so yes. once we've done our actions our planned response what's the new score going yeah, to be yeah. and most organizations have a template to fill in yeah and if you don't um, i'm sure you'll find one on google yeah so they're quite easy spreadsheets to do quite good in excel because then you can color code sort of yeah your, your most scoring. most most risk registers are in excel so let's check we've done everything so mm. define the term risk we've done that uh, explain the purpose of risk management is to manage the project in more effectively uh, describe the process including identification analysis and response and closure um, describe the use of a risk register oh closure we didn't do closing a risk mm. so um a risk may have gone so you may have risks associated with the design phase and when the design phase is finished then you would close out all those design risks because <laughs> hopefully yeah. not relevant anymore hopefully right? you're going to go back in time and discover them you might have some residual design risk aspect no. good it's great Happy? thanks paul yep thank you very much we hope you enjoyed this podcast and found it informative to find out about our training courses, e-learning or tutor-led course, please go to www.parallelprojecttraining.com.
www.sbs.com.au